Continuing our conversation here on News Talk with Tom Frelkeld, editor-in-chief of the DC Pro Sports Report. A loss in court mm -hmm. for the athletes at Northwestern University who were seeking the right to unionize. Mm -hmm. the Big picture issue here, and we'll open the phone lines at 703-387-1020 to get your thoughts on this. Given how much money uh, college basketball and college football produce, mm -hmm. should athletes get some of it? That's the, that's the macro question. And so we can talk about the NLRB ruling. That's the, the more narrow sort of legal aspect of this, but, right. but, it, but it obviously ties to, the, to this question of should these athletes, without whom the profits, I call them profits, others would call them revenue, they, they, no athletes, no revenue, so should they be uh, there when all that money gets spent, uh, distributed? Yeah, well, look, I certainly think so. I mean, if you want to talk profits and revenue, I believe Division I football in 2013-2014 uh, produced, the last year we have the numbers for, produced 3.4 billion in revenue and 1.4 billion in profits. So I call them profits because these are, I mean, these are athletic, uh, these athletic divisions are run by like businesses frequently, and as, as are the conferences. With the beauty um, part being you don't have to pay the employees. That's right. That's the greatest thing in the world. They, you've got these people, they have, you have very low cost labor uh, and very high um, labor that would cost a lot of money in another uh, in any other circumstance. Yeah, look, the, the National Labor Relations Board in a unanimous decision ruled that um, these athletes, these football players at Northwestern are not employees and therefore cannot unionize. Now, it was a very narrow decision. They didn't rule that um, you can't have unions at schools. What they simply said was to rule on this issue, to, make these, uh, to allow these people to unionize, would disrupt college sports. Um, we have to remember that uh, only, I believe only 17 of the top sort of football schools in the nation um, are private schools. The rest are public schools. And those public schools are not subject to the National Labor Relations Board. They're subject to the state labor boards in each state. Soon after uh, the 2014 regional NLRB decision that, um, that, that ruled that they, you know, that, that they could unionize, um, we saw states like Michigan and Ohio rush to, to outlaw um, unionization of, of, of college students. Look, I, I think it's, you, you've seen the, uh, uh, the, the, the conferences take a few steps, like, like make uh, um, uh, scholarships four years and to provide uh, instead of year by year, mm -hmm. and to provide health care, which, which really ought to be a no-brainer. I mean, it's, it's incredibly immoral to put these kids through these brutal regimens and then and once they're done to say, well, thanks for all the money you made for us, you, you know, you, you'll be walking with a limb for the rest of your life, best of luck to you, um, which is what a lot of them have been doing. And, they and they, they, the only reason they stopped, I mean, it's a coincidence, they, they would say, was because of this decision. So look, I mean, I don't think this battle is over, and I think that the, the fight to, for greater rights for these athletes who produce so much money is going to continue. I think it'll probably, probably stay at the conference and the state level rather than going to the NLRB because there's no appeal from the NLRB. That's the end of that case. It, I think there's uh, reason to believe that this issue will be around because there is so much money, and it's all because of the athletes and they're seeing precious little That's of it. That's right. So and there was an Ed O'Bannon case, the $800 million, where, where it was ruled that we, this, this court ruling has been stayed, but a court found that these players are entitled to some of the profits from their likenesses being used. They're marketing individual players. That's, that's right. Clearly, they marketed clearly. In, in that case, it was a, a former college basketball player, Ed O'Bannon, and his school and, and college basketball made a ton of money from marketing his image, and he didn't see a penny of it. But a lot of the smaller programs make no money. So right. if you're, you know, if you're the right, if you're the third string right tackle at Podunk U, and you're not Nebraska, or Notre Dame, whatever, are you out under some future scenario where there is consideration given? I mean, it's. I think a lot of people are sympathetic to the broad notion mm. of what I'll call revenue sharing, but it does get tricky as you drill down a little farther. Absolutely. I think you'd, you'd really have to look at, you know, which schools and which programs are producing the revenue. And, and probably, basketball, too. Probably. Right, and probably look to divide um, the, the money that way. Basketball is very profitable at many, many schools. Um, and supports a, lo a lot of the other things that, that the schools want to do, you know, un unprofitable um, uh, um, um, programs. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think that'll, that'll be something to it. But it doesn't, it's not just money. I mean, let's remember, these students at Northwestern weren't really after salaries. What they wanted was better health care. 
they, and, and they wanted uh, more money being put into the, into the program so that they were more looked after and that there would be money waiting for them when they got out of school. It's not like they, it's not like they said, I'm a college junior and I want to be earning $85,000 this year. That's not what they were looking for. And if you have a seat at the table, you can talk about other issues as well. Yeah. You know, 6 a.m. practices and 6 p.m. Right. practices the, and, 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 and having an arrangement that really feels like a work arrangement without yeah. the paycheck that, at the really, end of the two weeks. It's really important to remember, these kids aren't working 10 hours a week mm -hmm. at college football or college basketball. It's 40 hours a week at the big programs, it may be more. And the pressure on them to focus on that rather than the academics is ferocious. And for these schools to just say, well, you're students, not athletes. This isn't a business. And you volunteered for this. That's right. It's really disingenuous, particularly when the coaches at public universities, mind right, you, right. are earning $4 million and up. And these athletic, uh, the, the, the presidents of these conferences, like the S SEC or the Big Ten, are earning huge amounts of money. And the students who make it all possible, who generate all of that revenue, 100% of it, Get zilch. What will you be watching for in preseason game number two, Washington against the Detroit Lions? Right. Well, first of all, we'll always be watching RG3 to see if he's going to, um, you know, lead the team. They, he has not led the first team offense to a score in the preseason for four games. They'd like to, you know, to a touchdown, I should say. They want to do that. That's a major thing. A, a couple of things I'm also looking for on a more individual level is I want to see Chris Thompson, who is, I think, probably going to be the third down back. He has to continue to block well in pass protection. He did very well in that against the Cleveland Browns he, in, in the first preseason game. He had a problem with that prior to that because he's very small, 5'8", 195 pounds. He, he showed a lot of uh, improvement there. Another one I want to see is the rookie um, uh, outside linebacker, Preston Smith, who had a big game against Cleveland, had one sack, had a tackle for loss, six total tackles, looked very, very good, and not just against backups. He had five tackles at halftime. Uh, I was very impressed by him. We will not see certain players like Junior Gallette won't be playing, Deshaun Jackson won't be playing, Bashad, of course, Bashad Breeland won't be playing, so we won't see those guys. I want to see how much they let RG3 play as well. Will he play a full quarter? I suspect he will. I was going to ask you, how much will he play and how much should he play? Yeah, look, Given I, that there's nothing like game experience to get you ready for game. I would, I would play him at least a quarter, maybe a quarter and a half, because he needs to play two to three quarters in the third preseason game. Obviously, you don't want to expose him to too many hits. That's very important. Nevertheless, you know, you need to see some production and, and some momentum out of that first team offense that we haven't seen so far in the preseason. Always good having you here. Tom Threlkeld of the D.C. Pro Sports Report. Find him online at dcprosportsreport.com. Thanks for coming in. My pleasure. Back with a program note after this.